atandika kasasiro tatu bade duli kasasiro si buli mwana abela ku street abaka sasiro buli mwa wa magezi buli mwa wa busiru buli mwa tegera ku singa bongo we bukola si kubera wano tatu baba siro until now the definition of street children remains confused in many circles of policy makers. UNICEF explains the concept to mean children below the age of 18 for whom the streets, wasteland and slum dwellings are their source of livelihood. Essentially, such children are abandoned. According to a consortium of NGOs advocating for child rights, there are about 100 million street children world over. In Kampala, there are no statistics of children living on streets but there are known places that harbor such children, each with the reason why they left their home to come to the city. Chivuru, a slum infamous for drug abuse and violence, is one among the dwelling places for street children in Kampala. <laughs> children as young as 10 like Abu Domuchibi, who found his way to the street in 2011. <laughs> Most put the reason for leaving their families to domestic violence and family breakdown. The scourge of HIV AIDS is also a big cause. But the long term pro problem is to address the push and pull factors. The push factors are those from household, from families. Parents to know that it is their responsibility to look after their children, not the government. Today we are providing free education, but people are not take, taking their kids to school. They are still doing child labor. A few were in school before they dropped out to come to the streets and slums. Life on the streets affords them abundant time, and with it comes drug abuse. In no time, the children are sucked into a life of sniffing aviation fuel, drinking alcohol, and smoking marijuana and cigarettes. But not all street children on the streets of Kampala and other towns are full-time street children. Others are part-time. Part-time street children would be street children who come to the streets during the day. But in the night, they will go to other places off the streets. It doesn't matter whether those places would be places where there are gangs, uh, you know, groups of children living together, paying uh, to live somewhere, you know, at night, that is home. So that's that child's address. But a full-time street child would be a child who lives, works, and sleeps on the streets at night. Sebastian Chigozi is a part-time street child and the relative face of children surviving on streets. He left his family in Kamme and Gompiji about three months ago. He used to live with his auntie, whom he says was violent towards him. His father is a poor casual laborer who tracks parts of central Uganda in search for work. Sebastian was in primary three before he dropped out of a UPE school and subsequently found his way to Kampala on a goat-faring truck. No. I always ask parents, what has happened with your, your kids? They said, this is the mkuyiya. They even use the, a word which is common, kuyiya. So that means the parents can even allow a street kid to, a, a, his own kid to come to streets to kuyiya. Survive. Survive. Survive is kuyiya. In his first days in Kampala, Sebastian was a full-time street child who depended on handouts from kind city dwellers. A month ago, he learned survival skills from colleagues on streets, and an idea struck him to collect metal scrap and sell it to wholesalers who own small stores in Chivulu. A kilogram of scrap is bought at 600 shillings. On a good day, Sebastian can collect about four kilograms. It is tough work gathering a kilogram of metal because there are hundreds of other children like Sebastian looking for the same treasure from every city street and garbage collection centers. Sebastian risks it all and goes to places where children like him are least wanted. Many times they are roughed and beaten up. And sometimes, when they are suspected of theft, they are killed. Back in Chivuru, 
Sebastian has to find something to eat and 500 shillings to pay for accommodation in a filthy, dilapidated iron sheet house beside the Nachivugo channel. This room, as you can see, it is about uh, 8 feet by 10. Uh, around that, it is very small, but uh, in a night, it accommodates about uh, 12 children. That's uh, a big number for a small room uh, like this. It is uh, close to 10 p.m., and um, as you can see, Sebastian and others are getting ready to sleep. Uh, prepare for tomorrow and things like that, like you would be uh, doing in a normal home. As other children retire to distant houses to sleep on fluffy mattresses under treated mosquito nets, this is where Sebastian rests for the night, only to get up to start the battle to survive. The children talk about the long day before they can sleep, vigilant of police at the same time. The other children called full-time street dwellers get a place to sleep by asserting their ability to protect a territory. These children here and Sebastian and a rotten roof in Chivul are barely any different. Sebastian is one of the few lucky children who will at the start of next week live in a distant home after we took him to an organization that will find him shelter. He told me his desire was not to pick scrap from garbage, but to return to school and be like other children. Sebastian could be lucky, but there are thousands of destitute children who are hopeless on streets. They don't know where their next meal will come from, they have not heard from their families in a long time, or used a painkiller for some of the terrible infections they suffer. All they do is to survive. Frank Walisemi, NTV.